Welcome back everybody, this is Latin's Fight Picks. Today we'll go do the recap for Rosenstruck versus Gaziev that happened last Saturday. So let's start, we'll go over what went right, what went wrong, but I gotta tell you, almost everything went right. We'll start from the most confident to the least confident, we'll talk about the fights. Nurmagomedov, uh, minus 1,300, I mean, yeah, most confident, definitely won the fight, but I got to admit, that new guy, what, what can't remember his name right now, is it, what's his name? Um, I don't know what to do. Yeah, anyways, the new guy from uh, Kazakhstan, I believe. He is uh, going to be a good fighter to watch. There's going to be a lot of guys that he can beat. And uh, during the first round, he actually uh, stung Nurmagomedov to the point where he actually shot for a takedown. And he got lucky and he got the takedown. I mean, he was just so much better than him on the ground. But I got to admit, the new guy, uh, good takedown defense, you know, and he, he kept Getting back up, he's got great cardio, he's got some wicked punches. The guy's going to be an exciting person to watch in the UFC. Looking forward to his next fight. But he fought, you know, a guy who's probably going to be the next champ. So, yeah, for sure. But at minus 1,300, it was not playable. Even though I, you know, I had, I had him in a degenerate parlay. So, not all of them, but this one. Just, just because it increased the amount but yeah and it worked out because you, you'll see what i'm saying but anyways uh it's not really playable minus 1300 but uh yeah it was an excellent fight it's entertaining he well after the first round where he actually got clipped uh he was saying that he didn't even see that punch coming he just immediately took it to the ground he wasn't standing with that new guy anymore the guy is too dangerous anyways looking forward to watching his next fight i'll tell you Ursig, um, as I said, I said, you know what? Um, Schnell is going to punch Ursig as hard as he can, and Ursig is going to take his punch, and then Ursig is going to punch Schnell as hard as he can, and he won't be able to take it. And that's exactly what happened. And I had him in a prop bet where I had Ursig um, as a, for a knockout as well. I think it was plus 350 uh, with, with another knockout uh, as well with Klein. So, um, anyways, it was it, most, I mean, it was everyone expected Ursic to be a submission. And I thought, you know what? I don't know because Schnell is dangerous on the ground. And you saw that Schnell had really good takedown defense. Ursic actually tried to take him down. He couldn't take him down. Uh, Schnell's really dangerous on his feet, off his back. The only problem with Schnell is his chin. Otherwise, the guy's a really good fighter. It's his chin. That's the only thing. And that's exactly how Ursic ended up putting him out. Because he's going to be competitive with Ursay. He had good strikes. He had good. He's good on the ground. He had excellent takedown uh, defense. So, anyways, Ursay did win. Knocked him out. Again, the only problem with Schnell, chin, and that's how we won. Anders, um, like I said, minus five fifty for Anders. It's absolute crap. The guy's not that good. I mean, he's just big, strong, and tough. And and you saw he got clipped in the first round and. I mean, everyone probably had a heart attack who had a bet on Anders um, because uh, he, got, he got hit and he got knocked down. But he, he recovered and he came back and he, and he won the fight the next two rounds. Um, yeah, and uh, what was the other guy's name? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm doing the other fights. I kind of forgot everyone else's name. But anyways, the guy who was fighting was retiring. Um, let, me, let me find this thing. It's bothering me. The guy who was fighting was, was actually... Um, going to retire so and he kind of announced it after the fact so it wasn't too surprising but you know even if he wasn't retiring i necessarily wouldn't have been betting against anders yeah pickett pickett was uh ended up announcing that he was going to retire after that fight and Nurmagomedov was fighting almakan that guy's going to be good um yeah so he ended up winning a, a decision it was way too close for anyone's liking but i mean you can't bet against anders he should have won the fight he did win the fight but definitely i mean yeah 
you got to put Anders with the right competition at this point in his career. Klein. Klein minus 1100. You know, Klein was going to walk through this guy, but I got to admit, this guy took a lot of punishment and he nailed Klein quite a few times. Klein's very tough. Uh, he took a lot of clean shots. And for a few times when I saw him take the clean shots, you know, I was just like holding my breath, like, is he going to go down? Like, that was pretty hard. And uh, Klein ended up surviving it. But uh, I got to admit, there's split seconds there where you're like, oh my God, is it was a, like was clean shots, you know, eaten by Klein a few times <clears throat> by Cunningham. And uh, Cunningham's going to be exciting. I don't know if he's going to be really good. He's barely UFC level, but he's going to be entertaining. And we, and if you pair him up with the right guys at the lower level, it's going to be fun to watch. Minus 1100, he wasn't playable. You know, I did have him in a, one, a, a parlay because, well, maybe I shouldn't have even had him in a parlay, but, but I did because I was pretty sure he was going to win. And uh, in a big enough parlay, it will pay to do it, but it's high risk, right? But nevertheless, not playable as an individual. Klein definitely won. I mean, he was just so much better than this new guy. Mokaev, uh, Mokaev, you know, I mean, decision victory, right? I actually had a bet on that he's going to knock him out. It was a really good payout for a knockout. Everyone expected uh, a submission prop, but nevertheless, Makaev is going to be moving on um, and fighting different guys. Perez, you know, he, he put up a good fight, but yeah, nevertheless, the, it's the ground game of Makaev that kind of won it for him, right? So, as expected, it was a high degree of confidence. Uh, moving on, this is my favorite fight, and I told everybody, of all the fights, if I'm going to pick an underdog, and I had him laid out here, I said, I'll pick Bashir, but I said, I'm, I have a play on Zahavi as the underdog. He was my favorite underdog to for the big underdogs, like for the big, against the big favorite. This was the guy, and I actually had him in a few parlays, and it was a monster, going to be a monster parlays, but unfortunately, when I did have my monster parlays, I also had this guy. <laughs> But I did hit a few parlays with Zahabi in it, with shorter parlays, and I ended up making quite a decent amount of money. It was good. It was it was very profitable this week. Um, so yeah, I had Bashrat in a couple of parlays, but I had Zahabi in more than that. So uh, it was good. It was good. I was really happy to see the decision. I could see Zahabi being able to beat this guy, you know, and there you go. Bashrat's no longer undefeated. And we don't have to watch him make any more decisions and fight that way. He's going to have to try a little harder. Uh, moving on. Uh, Petrino. You know what? I was only concerned about the first round. I, I still thought Petrino was going to pull this off. I was really hesitant because the first round, he's so dangerous. And he keeps talking about a resurgence in his career. You know, and he got me kind of buying into it. So I said, you know what? I will have a small nibble on Pedro, but most of my bets were, my, my main bet was on Petrino and my parlays, either I had Petrino or I didn't have anybody. I just kind of omitted this because I, and I didn't, I think I had Pedro on one just because of the multiplying effect, just to try it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was obvious Petrino, he dominated all three rounds. You know, it's clear victory, Petrino, that was correct, and I'm, and I'm, I'm marking him as correct because, because, <laughs> I guess, because I, I kind of left it open for Zahabi, and I left it open for these guys, so I had him bet both ways. Um, moving on, Duncan, uh, yeah, you know, Duncan's a way better fight than Ribeiro. I don't know why everyone thinking that Ribeiro is going to win. He dominated him. Duncan, definitely being a smarter fighter, um, just fighting a little cleaner and just more, just smarter and more controlled and not putting himself in situations where he might lose going after people where they're weak. So he's anyway, just fighting, he's just becoming a, a smarter fighter and he, he took Ribeiro to the ground. I mean, that's where this is going to be the safest, even though he was picking him apart from the feet. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he did well, he did well. Rosenstrup, you know, Gaziev ran out of gas. I don't. I, I wasn't surprised. I was expecting this kind of performance the last time, but the other guy wasn't good enough, and it was against uh, Budai. And 
I was I thought Budai was gonna get him into the later rounds and win, but Budai obviously not a very good nail and not very good defense, and I just kind of gave up. And Gaziev, he's a great fighter. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's tough. This guy can take a punch, but he's not that fast. He's got a good jab, but he's not that fast. And his he's got okay defense, but he's not. I mean, it depends on the level he's fighting. When he gets to this level, no, he's not that fast, and he doesn't have that great uh, defense, striking defense. But when he's at a lower level, he's very fast. He's got an excellent jab. He's got a good jab in general, but he's got an excellent jab compared to those other guys. And he's got enough uh, striking defense, and most of his striking defense is kind of like his offense. And he's got a ground game, right? But he doesn't have a great takedown game. He's got a good enough takedown game for the lower level guys. Rosenstruck has already been against the top level guys trying to take him down. And he survived it, and he lost the first two rounds. They were close, but he lost them. And then he just took over with his jab. He's a way better striker. Um, and then, yeah, I think uh, Gaziev couldn't continue after the fourth round. Yeah, that's a good bet. Plus 150. Underdog. Underdog. Those were great. Razabov. Like I said, he's well-rounded. Way better fighter than uh, El Hussein. What's his name? Um, El Sawadi. You know, uh, I mean... I think it was a 1-1 going into the third round. And uh, El Zawadi was really putting it on him. You know, like going to out cardio him kind of thing. And that's how he usually wins his fight. But R Razabov was pushing through his, uh, you know, his tiredness. And he's got power. This guy's got power. And El Zawadi has been KO'd before. And sure enough, he found that KO. Man, I'm so happy about that fight. Anyways, again, an underdog plus 150. This was a little bit disappointing because I had a couple of really large parlays and he was in it. And uh, I wasn't, I have a cutoff here, but for some reason I missed it. And there was a couple of parlays with him in it, but I didn't, I should have had one parlay with him in it and one parlay here at the cutoff. And actually I had made a mistake and put him in both which would have been a massive parlay because up to that point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it, would have, it was a 10, 10 unit parlay. I have a smaller parlay over here, but I would have had a 10, 10, 10 uh, fight parlay without this guy, but I accidentally put two 11 fight par <laughs> you, um, two 11 fight parlays without removing him on one. <laughs> So it was, uh, yeah, it could have been huge by accident, but it was uh, not huge at all by accident. Nevertheless, uh, overall, it was very profitable because, I mean, up to this point, any parlay I hit, I was hitting all of them. But this guy, he's young. He, his metrics aren't great. He's kind of short. And he, fight, uh, he fought Oliveira. And you know what? I watched the first round. He won the first round. And he took, ended up taking Oliveira down. And he came up the second round. And he took Oliveira down. And it was about, you know, three minutes into the round. I was watching this fight. And I'm there like, it's in the bag. This is in the bag. He's on top. He's controlling him for like at least two minutes of that a second round. He had won the first round. I said two more minutes of him just controlling him. He couldn't submit him. Oliveira had good defense. This guy just couldn't figure out how to submit him. I thought, okay, great. He's going to win this round. He's on his way to winning the round. He's on top. He's got him on the ground. And uh, he just has to not get KO'd in the third round. And then out of the blue, Oliveira gets up, get, gets him over him and on the ground, and when he gets on the ground, this guy takes a few massive shots from Oliveira, and Oliveira tees off on him, and Oliveira steals that round. And at that point, the guy was tired, but he he just got drained after these massive shots on the ground. They just took, the, took it right out of him. And he went into the third round, hands down, tired, beaten up at that point. And eventually, you know, I was hoping he'd maybe take him down and hold Oliveira down and win, but he got KO'd, flying knee. He was, yeah, yeah he, he had lost it. I mean, it, it was bad because after the first half of the second round, I thought this was in the bag. 
and I don't know what happened. Once he got flipped over and got nailed really hard a couple times, it just took it right out of him. It just drained him. It, his gas tank went to zero at that point. It was just holding on. Uh, that was that was. I mean, I don't know. Like it, it was a good pick. The guy was winning the fight. He was the better fighter. He made one mistake, and it cost him. So, yeah. All in all, it was pretty good. Uh, we got, you know, 11 fights, only one wrong. This one I had a bit both ways. Depends how you want to count it. I mean, it is what it is. But anyways, I had it both ways. Um, so I'm going to count it as correct. But uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, Sapai was, the, was definitely the one mistake. So I, 10 out of 11, as far as I see. You know, I guess you can make an argument that, you know, maybe these guys were on top. Technically, he was the wrong pick, even though I had it bet both ways. You know, then it could have been, uh, you could argue that it was um, 9 out of 11. But, but overall, I'm counting it as 10 out of 11. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's the way I want it. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Nevertheless, it was a good week. Very happy about it. Looking forward to this uh, 299, UFC 299. I've actually got it done. Actually got it done today. And it was scary that, that uh, anyways, it was scary how fast I got it done. And I don't think I'm agreeing with a lot of people that are picking out there. And I could see a lot of upsets happening with 299. Now, either I'm going to look really wrong or really right, and we shall see about that. But I'll tell you what, if those upsets happen, I mean, it's going to be massive, but nevertheless. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, hit like if you like the content. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to be notified when my next video comes out. I'm going to try bring it out tomorrow, Thursday at the latest. But tomorrow, I'm going to give it a shot to see if I can get out a little earlier. Probably end up being Thursday during the day, but, but I'll try to get it out tomorrow. Like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Well, I'm done, but I, there's a couple things I just want to look over before I put the finishing touches on the board. Yeah, otherwise, uh, leave a comment. Let me know how you did. Let me know where things went right or went wrong for yourself and what you thought about the fights. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me and we will see you tomorrow or the next day for the UFC 299 breakdown. See you guys later.